Students, in this class, we can see about the endomembrane system. Endo means inside, membrane. So, inside the cytoplasm, membranous structures are there and their functions are coordinated and they form the endomembrane system. Okay, you know, the eukaryotic cells are having membrane-bound organelles. So, all the membrane-bound organelles which are present inside the cell and if their functions are coordinated, we can consider it as endomembrane membrane system okay so here the endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes and vacuoles are considered as endomembrane system because their functions are coordinated even though mitochondria and the plastids are having membranes around them they are not considered under endomembrane system because their functions are not coordinated because they are they have entirely different functions okay so about the endomembrane system we can see in this class so first about the endoplasmic reticulum the endoplasmic reticulum uh, can be seen as a tiny tubular structure scattered in the cytoplasm. When we see the cell under the electron microscope, we can see a network of tiny tubular structures scattered in the cyto cytoplasm and is named as endoplasmic reticulum. Reticulum means what? A network like a structure. Okay. And this endoplasmic reticulum is will be dividing the intracellular space into two distinct components what are they luminal comp compartment and the extra luminal compartment so two distinct compartments are uh, formed by the uh, membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum one is the luminal compartment and other is the extra luminal compartment so what is this luminal compartment see here in this picture if you see you can see the cavity the space which is present between the membranes isn't it so they form the luminal compartment and the outer chamber which is formed that we can say it as the extra luminal compartment that is the cytoplasm okay in the cytoplasmic region that forms the extra luminal compartment now uh, in ribosomes if uh, ribosomes are seen attached with the endoplasmic reticulum then we can say that as rough endoplasmic reticulum so what is rough endoplasmic reticulum the endoplasmic reticulum bearing ribosomes on their surface are called rough endoplasmic reticulum if ribosomes are not there on their surface, it is called a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so the endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes on their surface are called as rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the endoplasmic reticulum without ribosomes are said to be a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, endoplasmic reticulum are of two types, isn't it? Now, when we see the function of this rough endoplasmic reticulum, they are mainly involved in protein synthesis and secretion. So, they are actively seen uh, in the cells which are involved in uh, protein synthesis and secretion. As ribosomes are there on their outer surface, they help in protein synthesis. Okay. They and uh, they also form a continuous uh, membrane structure with the outer membrane of the nucleus. The function of this uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the synthesis of lipid. Okay, protein is synthesis, synthesized by rough endoplasmic reticulum and uh, lipids are synthesized by smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, then in animal cells, lipid like steroid hormones are also synthesized in uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay so what is also synthesized lipid like steroidal hormone steroid is also a type of lipid isn't it so lipid like steroidal hormones are also synthesized in smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay so this is about the endoplasmic reticulum next we can see about the golgi apparatus or the golgi complex it was discovered by Camillo Golgi, okay, who first observed Golgi apparatus. It was first observed by Camillo Golgi and it is uh, observed as densely stained reticular structure near the nucleus. So, this is also a network of structure which is present near the nucleus okay so it is named as golgi apparatus after the uh, 
scientist Camillo Golgi because he first observed it and so it was named as Golgi apparatus. Okay. Now it consists of uh, many flat disc shaped you can see here many flat disc shaped sacs or cisternae. Okay. Uh, which are uh, uh, having the measurement the diameter of 0.5 micrometer to 0.1 micrometer okay it is having the diameter of uh, 0.5 to 1 micrometer diameter okay and uh, it is it consists of what a flat disc shaped sacs or a cisternae which are arranged parallel to each other so in the picture you can see they are arranged parallel to each other one above the other they all are arranged isn't it all the uh, disc shaped sacs or cisternae are arranged okay then this golgi uh, cisternae are concentrically arranged near the nucleus that is the convex end is said to be as the cis end or the forming end and it is uh, facing towards the nucleus okay and the concave end that is the trans or the maturing end will be facing away from the nucleus okay the gold it is arranged in such a way that near the nucleus the distinct convex cis or the forming face will be there and the concave or the trans face or the maturing face will be opposite to that okay uh, in this picture, I think you are able to see this is the cis phase which will be facing near the nucleus and the maturing phase will be facing towards the uh, outer side that is the opposite side. Okay, not towards the nucleus or towards the opposite side. So this is the trans phase. Okay, this is the trans phase and this is the cis phase. This is the forming phase. This is the maturing phase. Okay, this is and the trans phases of this organal of this Golgi apparatus are different. They are entirely different but they are interconnected with each other. Okay, now when we see the function of this uh, um, Golgi apparatus, they perform the function of packaging materials. Okay, to be delivered either to the intracellular targets or it can be secreted outside the cell okay so main function is water it package the materials actually whatever materials are synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum it will be packaged and then it will be either delivered within the cellular targets wherever it is required it can be delivered or it can be secreted outside the cell okay and uh, materials to be packaged in the form of vesicles from the endoplasmic reticulum fuse with the cis phase of the Golgi apparatus and moves towards the trans phase. Okay, so the uh, materials which are to be packaged actually it will be uh, fusing with what with which phase uh, fusing with the cis phase in this region they will come and fuse. Okay, and uh, uh, then moves towards the maturing phase where they will be released out. This is the maturing phase where they will be released out. Okay. So, this uh, actually this explains why the Golgi apparatus remains in close association with the endoplasmic reticulum. See, we have seen it is in close association with the nuclear membrane. Same way, it is also in close associ association with the, the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, why? Because the uh, whatever is produced by the endoplasmic reticulum will be re uh, received by the cis phase of the Golgi apparatus and then after packaging, modifying, it will be released out uh, through the trans phase of the Golgi apparatus. Okay, Golgi apparatus is also the site for the formation of uh, glycoproteins and glycolipids okay For glycoproteins and glycolipids are also produced in the Golgi apparatus okay so this is about the Golgi apparatus next is the lysosome it was first observed by Christian D. Duve okay 
and these are membrane bound vesicular structure which are formed by the process of packaging in the golgi apparatus so we have seen the golgi apparatus are used to package and modify the substances which are produced by the endoplasmic reticulum isn't it so uh, these membrane bound vesicular structures which are formed by such uh, process of packaging in the golgi apparatus forms the lysosomes so, so we can say golgi apparatus can also synthesize the lysosomes or uh, can help in the formation of lysosomes okay now this uh, uh, separated uh, lysosomal vesicles actually they are vesicle like as it is sac like structures these vesicles is very rich in all types of hydrolytic enzymes so what are the hydrolytic enzymes present uh, present they are together we can say it as hydrolases enzymes they are lipases proteases and carbohydrates so these are the hydrolytic enzymes which are present in the uh, lysosome okay and what is the function of this these are actually active in an acidic ph and they are capable of digesting carbohydrate proteins lipids and nucleic acids all the um, nutrients all the organic nutrients can be digested with the help of this lysosomes okay the enzymes present in the lysosomes so the lysosome contains the powerful hydrolytic enzymes in them which are together said to be as the hydrolases which includes lipases proteases carbohydrates which can act at an uh, uh, acidic uh, uh, ph that is it can act uh, actively at an acidic ph okay and the enzymes uh, are capable of digesting carbohydrates proteins lipids as well as nucleic acids okay vacuoles they are uh, named by dujardin the vacuole means it is a membrane bound space which is found in the cytoplasm okay normally vacuole means an empty space isn't it which is surrounded by a membrane and it is found in the cytoplasm it contains water water sap if it is plant cell it contains sap or excretory product and other materials which are not useful for the cell okay whatever waste materials are there they can be stored in this vacuole the vacuole is surrounded by a single membrane called a tonoplast in the uh, picture you are able to see that is it that this membrane is called as what a tonoplast okay so the vacuoles are surrounded by a single membrane called a tonoplast and in plant cells the vacuoles can even occupy 90% of the volume of the cell so such huge vacuoles are present in plant cells okay now if you see about uh, the uh, other organism like amoeba it is having a contractile vacuole which is uh, uh, important in excretion all the excretory waste can be stored and it can be eliminated out okay that is the contractile vacuole in the picture you can see this is the contractile vacuole which is present in amoeba which can uh, help in excretion okay now in plants uh, i told you the uh, membrane the vacuole is surrounded by a membrane called a tonoplast isn't it this tonoplast can help uh, in the transport of a number of ions and other materials against the concentration gradient into the vacuole okay against the concentration gradient means what uh, from low concentration to high concentration okay if it is from high concentration to low concentration it is along the can concentration gradient when it is against the concentration gradient it means that it, the substances will be moved from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration so if any such a, a waste materials or any sub substances have to be uh, stored uh, then uh, the tonoplast can help in the transport of the substances against the concentration gradient so that they can enter into the vacuole okay so the concentration of the substances will be normally higher in the vacuole than in the cell cytoplasm okay 
Now, in some of the other organisms, even food vacuoles are also present, and these food vacuoles are formed by engulfing the food particles. See, if you take a, in this picture, you can see uh, the paramecium. They also have water, the food vacuole. You can see the food vacuole present in it. Okay, uh, so this food vacuole is formed due to the uh, taking in of engulfing the food particles into it. So when a food particle is entering inside, it will be surrounded by a membrane structure and thus it forms the food vacuole. Okay, so this is about the vacuole. So that's all about the endomembrane system. Okay.